A lot of people are concerned about the health effects of pesticides, and for good reason. Several studies have linked pesticide exposure to such negative health effects as respiratory distress, reproductive issues, endocrine system disruption, including uh, promoting obesity, they're known as obesogens, I'll get to that later, neurological damage or damage to the nervous system, and increased risk of certain cancers. So there is a certain uh, truth to the uh, concern about pesticides. Now there's a uh, organization called the Environmental Working Group, uh, and each year since 1995, they've released what they call the Dirty Dozen. This has to do with uh, uh, various produce. They, they rate the uh, amount of pesticides uh, that's found in the, pro in the produce. Uh, to compile the Dirty Dozen, the, the uh, Environmental Working Group analyzes 38,000 samples taken by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration to single out the worst uh, produce, the worst offenders. Uh, now, you should know that pesticides are tightly regulated by the U.S. Department of Ag Agriculture, and uh, reports indicate that the pesticide levels found on 99.5% of conventional produce are well below recommendations set by the Envi Environmental Protection Agency. Um, so, in other words, yeah, a lot of the produce does have pesticides, but the amount of pesticides, according to these uh, government reports, aren't enough to cause health problems. The question is, uh, is it is it a relation to how much you eat? In other words, if you're, a, let's say, a vegetarian who eats a lot more fruits and vegetables than non-vegetarians, are you ingesting enough of these pesticides to cause problems? Another, th another aspect to take into account is the current presidential administration is trying to get rid of a lot of environmental protection laws, including those that govern p the use of pesticides. Uh, if these, um, if these uh, changes in the uh, existing laws go into effect, uh, the uh, amount of pesticides that are allowed to be used on, on produce and, and in foodstuffs will increase dramatically along with rates of death uh, from cancer and other diseases. Uh, so uh, I'm not trying to get political here. This is just a fact. And the reason why the government is doing this, I'm not going to mention which government, but it's the government in power now, is basically because companies make more money when they can produce uh, greater amounts of uh, produce, and uh, and uh, you know it's a money thing. That's all that it is. It's, there's no concern for health. But let's get into what are what did the uh, environmental working group uh, this year? They they released their again dirty dozen or list of the 12 uh, most contaminated uh, produce in relation to pesticides. So let's talk about which ones they are. Strawberries. Conventional strawberries consistently are on the dirty dozen list. In 2018, the Environmental Working Group found that one-third of all strawberry samples contain 10 or more pesticide residues. Now, does that mean you shouldn't eat strawberries? No, I'll get to that later. I should also point out right now, strawberries are extremely healthy, and, they, and they're one of the best. In fact, they contain the highest amount of a little-known flavonoid called fisetin. Fisetin is a... Uh, uh, is, 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 very few people know about it. It's only uh, known to researchers, but among other things, fisetin is very, very brain protecting. It actually might help prevent degenerative brain disease like Alzheimer's disease. It's very anti-inflammatory, and strawberries are the richest source. So you'd be going against your own health to uh, eliminate strawberries from your diet. But later on, I'm going to go, uh, go into ways where you can uh, have even the so-called dirty produce and, uh, and still not have any health problems. Next, uh, the next uh, produce that was uh, uh, found to be dirty by the Environmental Working Group in relation to pesticides was spinach. Popeye's favorite food, spinach. 97% of spinach samples contain pesticide residues, including one called perm permethrin. That's a neurotoxic pesticide that's highly toxic to animals. Uh, uh, you know, how much uh, would cause toxic effects in humans? I don't think would you'd have to eat a hell of a lot of a hell of a lot of spinach to get uh, have it turn into a neurotoxin, but I, I really couldn't tell you how much. Next, nectarines. The Environmental Work Group detected residues in nearly 94% of nectarine samples, with one sample containing over 15 different pesticide residues. Apples. They say an apple a, a day keeps the doctor away. Well, 
Sometimes an apple will bring will cause several doctors to end your life if you have pesticide poisoning. <laughs> That's not likely, but, you know. But the Environmental uh, Working Group detected pesticide residues in 90% of apple samples. And guess what? The pesticides are on the most the healthiest part of the animal, which is the uh, the uh, outside part. You know, the the uh, not the right. What is it called? The peel. Apple peel is actually people don't realize is the healthiest part of the apple because it it contains most of the uh, uh, protective chemicals that are found in uh, apples called polyphenols. So people that let's say throw away the uh, peel and eat only the, uh, the 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 bulk or the, the the you know the fruit part of the apple are are already you know doing something wrong. Unfortunately, the peel also contains most of the uh, pesticides. 80% of the apples tested contain tra traces of diphen diphen diphenylamine. It's a pesticide that's actually banned in Europe. In Europe, they don't even allow that pesticide, but here they allow it on apples. Grapes. Conventional grapes are a staple on the dirty dozen list with over 96% testing positive for pesticide residues. Peaches. Over 99% of the peaches tested by the Environmental Working Group contain an average of four pesticide residues. Cherries. Tart cherries are very good for you. Uh, they reduce inflammation. Uh, tart uh, cherries are one of the only natural sources uh, containing a good amount of melatonin, which helps you sleep and reduces anxiety. Unfortunately, the Environmental Working Group detected an average of five pesticides five pesticide residues on cherry samples, including a pesticide called Epridione, which is also banned in Europe. Pears, over 50% of pears tested by the Environmental Working Group contain residues from five or more pesticides. Tomatoes, tomatoes contain is a great, great source of a, uh, of a flavonoid called lycopene. Uh, lycopene, in, in, in some studies, uh, ingesting a certain amount of lycopene actually can reduce the incidence of prostate cancer in men by 43%. It also is very, very effective at reducing cardiovascular disease because it helps to protect the uh, oxidation of low-density lipoprotein. Uh, so tomatoes are, are really a healthy food. And a little factoid for you, cooked tomatoes actually contain higher amounts of or, or more bioavailable lycopene than raw tomatoes. That's one of the few fruits or vegetables where... Uh, actually cooking and increases the nutrient bioavailability. Unfortunately, four pesticide residues were found in the conventionally grown tomato. One sample contained over 15 different pesticide residues. Celery. Celery. Pesticide, resi pesticide residues were found in over 95% of celery samples. As many as 13 different types of pesticides were detected. Potatoes. Potato samples contain more pesticide residues by weight than any other crop tested. Chlorpro chlorprofam, chlorprofam is a her herbicide that made up the uh, bulk of the detected uh, pesticides in potatoes. Sweet bell peppers. Sweet bell peppers contain fewer pesticide residues compared to other fruits and vegetables, but the environmental, uh, the environmental working group points out that pesticides used on sweet bell peppers tend to be more toxic. In other words, the sweet bell peppers contain less pesticides, but the ones they do contain are, are the more toxic pesticides. As I said, several studies have, have, least, uh, have uh, linked pesticide ingestion to uh, various health problems, most notably cancer, especially in animal studies. Animal, I mean, uh, farmers who apply certain pesticides to their crops show high, according to studies, show a higher frequency of obesity and colon cancer compared to the general population. And they think it's because of a uh, constant exposure to these pesticides. Uh, I should point out right now that a lot of these pesticides act are, are uh, function as what they, as what's known as obesogens, meaning they cause changes in the body that stimulate body fat synthesis. So anybody involved in in uh, fitness or bodybuilding should be concerned for that reason alone about pesticides because they could literally make you fat. Uh, there's one one particular uh, chemical that's used as a pesti uh, pesticide or has been used as a uh, pesticide called dinitro dinitrophenol or DNP that actually works in reverse. That, that actually uh, burns fat at a tremendous rate. I've, I've discussed it in other videos. It's used in bodybuilding. DNP is probably one of the most potent fat burners 
It's also the most dangerous and uh, can easily cause death. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but I would refer you to a past video that I did talking about the effects of DNP. But DNP is also used as a pesticide. Uh, regarding the pesticide levels in the body, the research shows that swapping... Uh, oh, no, wait. Uh, let me give you a couple of options. Uh, and if, you're, if you're concerned by what I've said so far about these pesticides and produce, what should you do? Now, the first thing that comes to mind is organic produce. Organic produce has been taking a beating lately. A couple of uh, studies have come out saying that organic produce is is, um, is not any better than regular or conventional produce. Uh, but I, I would not I would differ with that because for one thing, uh, organic produce contains a lot less pesticides. Uh, organic uh, there's only 25 organic pesticides used in the production of organic uh, produce. Now those pesticides used in organic produce are, are themselves organic. There's only 25. How many are used in conventional produce? Over 900. 900. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, there's one of those, uh, there's one uh, uh, organic uh, pesticide called rotenone, which has, it's unfortunate, it's been linked to an increased risk of uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, now, okay, I've, I've talked about some of the dangers and some of the foods, uh, uh, produce that is high in these pesticides. Uh, what can you do to protect yourself? Again, I want to point out, you do not want to eliminate those foods. They're extremely healthy. They provide vitamins, minerals, a couple of those unusual nutrients that I mentioned that are hard to get in supplemental form. They also provide fiber, which is very, very important for health and, and the health of the intestinal microbiome. So let's talk about ways of having your produce and eating it too without, you know, experiencing uh, health problems or cancer. Here's, here's what you do. First, you want to scrub them in cold water. You want to rinse fruit and vegetables in cold water while scrubbing them with a soft brush to remove pesticide residues. In other words, you want to scr uh, scrub them in cold water for at least five, six, seven minutes. You know, just make sure you really scrub them pretty good before you consume them. Another way is to use baking soda water. A study found that washing apples with 1% baking soda and water mixture was more effective in removing pesticide uh, residues than using water alone. So you can, again, uh, 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 add a little bit of a baking soda to the water, 1% concentration. That'll remove the pesticides even more. P you want to, uh, I, I know this is contradictory to what I said earlier, but um, a lot of the pesticides do concentrate in the peel of uh, various fruits. So you want to peel the fruits and vegetables. Removing the skin of dirty dozen fruits and vegetables can, 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 can significantly reduce the level of pesticides. Unfortunately, as in the case of apples, you're also eliminating a lot of the uh, nutrients. Uh, a lot, most of the nutrients in apples are found in the peel. So I would suggest uh, rather than throw away the peel, just thoroughly wash them. Uh, you could also blanch in one study, a blanching produce, which means expoiling, uh, exposing it to boiling and then cold water, led to a more than 50% reduction in pesticide residue levels in all vegetable and fruit samples except for peaches. Boiling. A study found that boiling strawberries significantly decreased pesticide residues with re reductions of 42.8 to 92.9%. Unfortunately, I don't really know the extent of, of uh, how much nutrient destruction would also occur with boiling. I would imagine that it's quite a bit. So to me, boiling is a rather extreme measure to get rid of the pesticides, although it is effective. You want to rinse, or another way, rinse products with oz oz ozonated water. Ozonated water, which is water mixed with a type of oxygen called ozone, has been found to be particularly effective at removing pesticide residues from food. So there it is. Uh, you know, I, uh, now you know what the uh, <laughs> the most uh, contaminated ve uh, fruits and vegetables are, uh, and also ways to uh, work around that, where you can safely eat those uh, fruits and vegetables. I th I still believe, though, based on my research, that you know the the best way to go is to stick with. Uh, it costs a little bit more, but I would stick with organic produce. And the truth is. Even though some studies that claim that organic produce contains no more nutrients than conventional produce, I've seen studies that differ. In other words, I've seen studies showing that organic produce actually is higher in certain nutrients 
than conventional products. So uh, I b personally be believe the best way to deal with this is to stick with organic products. Again, paying a little more, but a lot safer to eat. And if you do uh, prefer the much less expensive conventional products, you're going to have to uh, resort to one of the methods I just described if you want to really protect yourself from the effects of uh, long-term pesticide injection. Uh, ingest, did I say injection? <laughs> ingestion, not injection, ingestion. Anyway, that's it for pesticides. If you want the best information on nutrition, exercise, science, hormonal therapy, supplements, uh, uh, fat loss techniques that work, uh, did I say exercise, science, women's health, uh, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Best information, uh, and it's 40 to 50 pages every month, ad-free. I'm not associated with any uh, supplement company. I'm not going to try and sell you any supplements. I'm only going to tell you the 100% unvarnished truth. I'm one of the last bastions on uh, available anywhere that will give you 100% truth with no strings attached. None. Just the 100% truth. It's in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It incorporates my over 50 year, 57 years of experience, including 42 years as a, as a professional writer. It's there's nothing comparable to it anywhere available on the internet. No blog, no other digital publications. Nothing can compare to it. I guarantee it. I pro I promise you, no matter what your level of uh, academic knowledge, you will learn something in every issue. I guarantee that. So subscribe today to my my, my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, science, medicine, and health uh, pres preservation. Uh, every, and I also answer questions on the uh, Applied Metabolics Facebook page. And I, uh, on the Applied Metabolics site, I have an email, email portal where I will answer short questions submitted by subscribers, current subscribers, to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I don't answer unsolicited questions. Unfortunately, that includes uh, questions that are or co listed as comments under these videos. It depends on my mood. Sometimes I do answer the questions, but it's no guarantee. Uh, I cannot guarantee m uh, answering any questions that are asked uh, under the video. The only way you can absolutely be assured of, a, of an answer is to subscribe to my newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, Go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. In fact, I just got a uh, message from uh, somebody on ebook that uh, that asked me about uh, dogs. He says he's thinking of getting a dog, but he's afraid that it'll, it'll uh, desocialize him, mean, meaning that uh, if he gets a dog, he'll want to hang out with his dog and not talk to anyone. Well, here's my response. My response is ha getting dogs actually made me more social because when I walk my dogs down the street, I, I talk to complete strangers, people I'd never, ever talk to at all if I didn't have my dog with me. That includes a lot of women, although I will make a quick admission here. When women approach me and my little dog, they find my little dog cute, and uh, it's, it's <laughs> they always talk to my dog, Bruno, but they don't talk to me. They literally look at my dog and, and, and never even acknowledge my presence. They just talk directly to the dog. They say goodbye to the dog. They walk away. It doesn't bother me. I think it's cute. Hey, Bruno likes it. He's a, he's a you know he's a ladies' man anyway. But anyway, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. <laughs> They're great friends. Take care.